so you can finally publish full functioning websites directly from Figma. And I say finally because to be honest, everybody who's been in web design in the last few years, everybody who's designing websites in Figma was super frustrated by the fact that you now have to take your website that you designed in Figma and move it into Framer, move it into Webflow, and then rebuild it or use some kind of a plugin to start migrating. And it was a lot of headache. And people were actually predicting that being able to publish websites from Figma is going to actually happen last year, but it's finally here. And in this video, I want to share my thoughts because the internet, as you know, are always radical and people are either screaming, that's it, Framer is dead and this changes everything. And on the other side, people are screaming, this is, this is completely unusable. This is, has no accessibility. It's missing this, it's missing that. Nobody can take this seriously. And you know, radical opinions get views on the internet, but I wanna share my perspective because the truth, or as I see it, is always somewhere in the middle, which might not get as many views, but I think, uh, yeah, I think that's where things are. And I wanna share my perspective, basically my first impressions and also how this is going to impact Framer, Webflow, and my predictions for, I guess, short-term and long-term implication. So let's start with my first impressions. My first impressions were actually very good. I mean, I was testing out the templates that Framer sites coming with. They basically show you a lot of websites that they've built with this and you can play around with them and see how they were built. And I was actually quite surprised by how easy it is to publish websites because you already have auto layout, now you also have grid. So the, the functionality and responsiveness is all already baked into your design and adding interactions is actually fairly simple. So I was kind of blown away by the quality of nice work that you can already do. And this is, you have to remember, this is a beta version. It's not even version one. This is the first thing that we're seeing from this. And so I was actually quite impressed by what you can do with it. Of course, there are still things that are missing. Things like the CMS, things like uh, accessibility tools and, and uh, RAM or all kinds of you know responsive measurements. But it's obvious that these things are coming. This is just the first version. And so I'm actually quite happy with it. And I think that for a lot of people, especially beginner people who are already designing their first simple websites in Figma, just going ahead and publishing them, especially now that they launched it, they actually made it free to host with them. So you can connect a custom domain for free. This obviously is going to change uh, by the end of the year. And then they're probably very likely to charge just like any other hosting service. But right now, free, if you're just getting started, if you're a designer, you know, new designer, trying to get your portfolio out there, this is actually good enough. And so I think this is really, really impressive as a first version. Now, what does it mean for Framer and Webflow? Let me start with Framer. So Framer actually tried to make their interface very similar to Figma. And I think that's part of the reason why they became so popular. And so right now, of course, Framer right now is a little bit more uh, mature, robust, has everything you need to actually build a professional website. But I think that Framer is really going to have to think what they're going to do in the future or how to differentiate themselves because my bet is that in a matter of a year or two or three, Figma is probably, is very likely to catch up to all of the features that Framer did. And then there's going to be a question of why would, why would I use Framer? Right now, again, as I said, in the short term, Framer still has way more features, uh, way more mature. There is a lot of ecosystem of plugins that enables you to do really cool stuff in terms of interactions and other functionality on Framer. But we also know that the Figma community is 10, if not 100 times bigger than the Framer community. And so I can expect that in the long term, there are going to be a huge ecosystem of plugins for Figma sites as well. And so, as I've mentioned, in the short term, I think Framer is still safe. But in the long term, they're going to really have to think hard, how do they position themselves? Now, again, I love the Framer team. I think they're an amazing team. They're shipping very, very fast new features that are focused on designers, and they have already proved that they have can pivot successfully. They've done this in the past. So I'm not necessarily betting against them. I think there's, I'm, I'm really uh, curious to see how they react to this and what they do. I, I really uh, have a lot of faith in them and I'm curious to see how they will handle it. When it comes to Webflow, I think Webflow in the last three years, about three years, have really 
changed their strategy and focused on really big, complex websites for big companies, enterprises, and they have built a lot of features that are oriented at big, complex functionality, a lot of heavy interactions and really, really building custom websites. And so in that really up market of big, complex website, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for Figma to compete with them. So I think Webflow are in a way safe because they're not competing even on the same type of uh, users. The type of users, if we're thinking about them, I would say that beginners or even professional designers that are building small to medium websites like marketing websites, uh, personal websites, basically Framer and Figma are competing for the same segment of users. But Webflow are actually targeting only the professional designers building super professional, super complex uh, and custom websites. So these are a little bit of a different um, market. And so I think feel like by moving up market, um, Webflow are really differentiating themselves. Now they've already shipped uh, Webflow Cloud, which enables you to you know, host full stack apps on Webflow. And so they're going in a completely different direction. So I think they're safe in that regard, but the competition on, I would say either beginners or more simple website, that's where it's going to be really, really tough. So in terms of my predictions, I think that in the short term, the only people who can really use Figma sites are, again, beginners who are building super simple websites. If you need a portfolio, you don't really care about the quality of the code. You don't really care about performance speed. You don't really care about accessibility and maybe uh, GDPR, privacy compliance and all of that stuff then of course you can use it and you can use it and host it for free. So that is amazing. But in the short term, I think that, you know, professionals who are using Framer are going to keep using Framer. Professionals who are going to keep, uh, we're using Webflow are going to keep using Webflow. But we're going to have to see in the next year the rate of development and how much effort Figma are putting into this. And potentially it can be a really, really heavy competitor to Framer. Um, so I'm excited to see how this develops. I think that both team, the Framer team and the Figma team are really good team that are executing very, very fast. I think it's at the end of the day, really good for us designers that there are multiple companies, uh, that are competing and trying to give us the best tools possible. I think it's much better than when you have like a monopoly of a company like Adobe that rules the market and that, you know, they can do whatever they want or they can innovate really slow. So right now that the state of design tools for designers is really, really amazing. I do acknowledge that if you're a beginner, it might be a little bit confusing because there are so many options and now I have to, you know, wreck my brains about which one is the right one for me. And in that sense, I really feel like it's a great thing that if a beginner designs a website in Figma and can publish under the same software, that's really, really amazing for them. So those are my thoughts. I would love to hear what you're thinking. Let me know in the comments below. Let's keep the discussion going and more videos and tutorials on Figma sites are coming to this channel as well. Of course, see you in the next video.